Okay, so hi everyone. So I'm Dr. Go One In. I was going to explain about the design concept for chapter one, which is about the design, uh, the structural system for this video. And this slide uh, uh, is prepared by IR Muhammad Sofi, which is the coordinator for this subject. Okay, so let's go for the introduction of structural system. So, building is an assemblage of various systems such as infrastructure, structural system, m and &E system, structure security system, and anything. And structure system is a system that holding components of a certain system and transfer the load through the members of a structure to provide the stability and durability. So, example, wall bearing system, which is the first uh, photos from the left. Okay, and then we have skeleton structure system, which is this one. And we have the shell system. Tank system, which is this one, the steel structure, steel frames, and also the one, the steel structure. Okay, so the beam and column structure system. So you can see that the skeleton structure system with components we have beam and column system. We have frames, we have truss, we have arc, and then all this can be composed by the construct by the reinforced concrete, steel, or either timber. So these three will be explained detailedly in this video also. So the load from the slab is transferred to the column. So from the left, uh, slab will transfer to the column or the wall through the beams. Okay, through the beams. It will transfer to the beam and then to the beam to the column. And then from the column, it will transfer to the foundations. And then from the foundation, it will transfer to the soil beneath, which is the uh, hard soil, hard rock zone, which is a set. Okay, so reinforced concrete. So reinforced concrete is one of the principal materials used in material, many civil engineering applications. So such applications are in construction of buildings and infrastructure, retaining walls, foundations, water retaining structure, highway and bridges. So around 70% of the buildings around the world were constructed using the reinforced concrete due to reliability and low cost. So it is a composite material consisting of steel reinforcing bars embedded in a hard, hardened concrete matrix that has a complementary properties. As we know, so have you uh, have you learned in the previous subject about the concrete and steel, you will know that high, concrete are high in compressive strength but weak in tensile strength. However, the steel reinforcement have a weak compressive strength, but is highly in the tensile strength. So one is high in compressive strength, another is tensile strength. So they are the perfect match. Okay. So the reinforced concrete. Okay, we can see that this is an example. So for the steel reinforcement, so you can see that this is the example for the steel layer. Okay. The diameter of the steel bar is from six millimeter to forty millimeter. And the strength from the tensile strength test is from 400 megapascal to 600 megapascal. And for normal concrete, we are using cube test to test it, and then with the density around 24,000 at 12,400, and the strength is from 20 megapascal to 80 megapascal according to the design mix. Con reinforced concrete. Okay, so you can see that by providing the steel in a zone within a concrete member which were subjected to tensile stress and economical structural materials can be produced through these composite reactions. So in addition, the concrete provides corrosion protections by fire resistance to the embedded steel reinforcing bar. So you can see that this is the concrete without the reinforcement. So when the load applied here, Okay, crack patterns in the concrete under node with non reinforcement, it will occur at here. When the load apply here, here it will crack. However, if you have the, so if you draw the, the stress block, it will be like this. However, if you have this reinforcement here, so you can see that this is the compression, okay, and then the tension covered by this steel. So it will have a nice structure here, provide, okay, so. As here explained it before, so it will become an economical structural materials. And also, this concrete will cover the steel, provide the corrosion, which is avoid the rust surface 
and then we'll uh, have the fire resistant. So main RC elements for buildings. So you can see that for the main structure, uh, main elements, the common elements, we have slab, okay, which is the slab, the shear wall for the lift, the columns, okay, the beams, this is the beams, and this is the wall and the foundations, okay. So the slab will transfer the load to, uh, to the slab, uh, to the beam, and beam will to the column and to the wall, and we will to go through it to the foundations. So this is the reinforced concrete, which is the failure mechanism of reinforced concrete structure. So if you do the four point bending test on the concrete beam or concrete slab, okay, so you will see this shear zone. Okay, we have the failure zone, which is a shear zone at here, flexure zone at the middle, and shear zone at the right side. So first type of cracking, you can see that number one at the middle will be flexure tension cracking, and number two will be fraction, a flexure compression cracks at here this zone, which is the flexure compression, and number three here is the flexure shear cracks. This is caused by the shear cracks, and number four is diagonal tension cracks number five here is the shear compression crack number six is the dowel crack number seven this one is the diagonal tension crack from fracture okay and the fracture mechanism just now is for the fracture member so this one is is for the compression member so okay we have Commonly, we have three types of failure, which is first, buckling, okay, second, crushing, and third is shear. So, the buckling is normally happen at the long column, which is caused by the buckling. Number two is by the compression failure, which is normally is material failure, and happen on the short and wider column. And this is the shear failure, producing sliding failure of materials, along a plane that is parallel to the direction of the force okay and failure mechanism of the foundation you can see this is the example failure okay the load applied it here and then the flat step here it will collapse at here okay so this is the example reinforced concrete actual so you will have the reinforcement and the concrete so the reinforcement is embedded in the concrete and steel. Steel is one of the most important and efficient material for structural purpose. So in our construction, we are always mentioned about steel. So steel, as we know, okay, is one of the most important and efficient materials. There are numbers of inheritance character, uh, characteristics that make steels an ideal construction materials. This include its high strength to weight ratio. The weight of the steel structure is relatively very small means with its weight but it provides uh, very high strength okay this is the ratio it's mean so this property makes a steel very attractive structural material for high-rise building and long span long span girder speed of erection is often one of the main criteria for selecting steel and steel selection as uh, steel section used for construction are available in a variety of shape and size they make it remarkably versatile, versatile and aesthetically pleasing materials. So, steel, it can divide to hot rolled steel and coal form steel. So, for the hot rolled steel, okay, it's rolled the steel above is crystallization temperature, which is around 100, uh, 1000 Fahrenheit or equal to 538 degrees which more able to form and be shaped and this coal form steel is pressed with the pressure on a roller at temperature room temperature okay so let's just go back to the full mode first so hot roller steel sections okay which is this is the example of this section we have commonly used the universal beam universal column this is the hollow sections and this is the angle section so it example 
okay 254 times 102 times 28 UV which is the universal beam beam is the eye section approximately with 254 depth with height weight weighing of 28 kg per meter so you can see the example eye beam with the dimension provided okay and still you can see that this is the mechanical example mechanical properties of steel this one supposedly you already learned in the civil engineering materials okay so here i explain briefly so the steel the material properties that provided in bsen 1993-1-1-2005 in the class of 3.2.6 Okay, it provided that the uh, standard the modulus of elasticity which is 210,000 Newton millimeter squared and shear modulus which is the G is 81,000 Newton per millimeter squared and the poison ratio is 0 0.3 Okay, so this is the stress versus strain curve for the steel Okay and this is the standard and steel grade from the standard of EN10025-5. So as you are UTHM student, if you are UTHM student, so you can download the BSEN from the e-resources that we subscribe from the e, uh, the library website where you can find another video uh, from my YouTube about how to uh, find the correct sources from the e-resource you can so at there you will have a guide on how to download this so you can see that this is the steel structural system okay we have the column this is the column this is the reinforced concrete slab and this is the main beam the secondary beam and also the base so the slab will transfer the load to the secondary beam and secondary beam, the load will transfer to the main beam and from the main beam, it will transfer the load to the column and from the column, it will transfer to the base and this is the example steel structure and this is the example steel connection we can see that this is a gusset, connect, uh, gusset plate and this is a shield taps here, the example and steel structure failure so for steel beam, you have the bending failure Caused by fending and lateral torsional buckling, okay, shear failure, bearing failure, excessive deflections. If you want to understand this more, you can do self study more about what is all this failure for, okay. And then the steel column you have the squashing, overall fracture buckling, torsional buckling, and local buckling. So for timber, so the wood which is suitable or fit for engineering construction or the construction purpose is called as timber so the wood it will be called as timber so the use of timber as a structural material is not new in fact dating back many centuries so for us we know that okay so for the traditional mediation house it's made by the timber you can see that and found it still now as day in the kampong area or the uh, rural area or any roadside you can see that the traditional Malaysian house especially in Malacca if you want to go for a visit okay so manufacturing process for the timber you can see that this is a timber lock okay it will go through the machine and then you will sawn the timber and become like this so this is the example structural timber system okay so you can see that you have pulleys or core battens here you have truss and then we have the joint, we have the beam, okay, and we have the column. So structural timber design in Malaysia is according to MS544, permissible stress design. And design consideration including the density, strength group, moisture content, okay, which is greater than 19% is weight and lesser than 19% is dry, and timber defects seasonal effect and natural defect okay sorry just now my phone is ringing so let me continue this so you can see that this is the classification of Malaysian timber we have heavy hardwood medium hardwood light hardwood and soft hardwood so this is the example details of it you can study through it what is all this category so of this timber it will be explained details in the topic about the timber 
structural design for timber. Okay, so this video is until here. See you again in next video. Bye-bye.